Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we will be creating some farmhouse style decor using items from the Dollar Tree and 98 cent wood paint stir sticks. Now these pieces are perfect for decor in any space in your home and can be stained or painted in the color of your choice. Now these are all super easy to make and don't require any power tools. Now as always, all of the projects I create have complete supply lists in the description box so you can easily use it for reference as you gather your supplies. Now before we start, I have to say hey hey to all of my subscribers and if you're a new visitor to my channel today, I hope you consider subscribing as well and stick around to enjoy these crafts and the different methods that I will share with you throughout the creative process. So now, let's just jump right into the projects. Now this project is a ladder style planter display piece. Now we're going to need one of these large Halloween treat boxes from the Dollar Tree. One three pack of these five gallon paint stir sticks from Lowe's for 98 cents. One 10 pack of the one gallon paint stir sticks from Lowe's for 98 cents and some self adhesive hooks from the Dollar Tree. Now we're gonna start with our treat bucket and we're gonna go ahead and remove that ribbon hanging from the sides. And what we're gonna do is we are first going to sand down the side so we can apply one of these adhesive hooks in the top corners of this. So I'm gonna grab a piece of sandpaper and just sand down over the eyes of those little pumpkins. If you don't have any glitter or anything, you don't have to worry about this. Now once the area is sand down where you want to put the hooks, we are going to apply the hooks as shown here upside down so they'll hook to our ladder rack. Now I'm just going to peel off that adhesive strip and then I'm going to apply just the slightest bit of hot glue in that opening. You don't want to put too much because the hot glue will melt the plastic so just put a small amount. Now we want to repeat this for the other side and then adhere that into place as well, making sure it's even with the other side. Now once that's all done, I'm going to take it outside and give it a coat of my Zinsert 123 primer on the inside and out. Now while that dries, I want to start building up my ladder, so I'm going to open up both packs of my paint stir sticks. Now we're going to be needing two of the five gallon size, and I'm going to start with seven of the one gallon size. So I'm going to lay them out, spacing them evenly apart, approximately 12 inches, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab five of the... Uh, smaller paint stir sticks and put them up top to form a header. You just want to make sure the paddle sides are opposite of each other when you lay them down. And then for the portion that will hang our bucket on there, I'm just going to take two paint stir sticks, stack them on top of each other, and what I'm going to do is place them about seven inches up from the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and mark that with a pencil and then start adhering them in place. Now to adhere them, all you have to do is use some wood hot glue or you can use Gorilla wood glue, it's all up to you. Just apply a generous amount on each end of that paint stir stick and start to adhere them in place, just making sure that the sides of the ladder are even with the length of the paint stir stick. And you wanna complete this all the way down until all five of the paint stir sticks are nice and evenly placed and secured. Now once that's done, we can go ahead and add our double layer uh, paint stir stick here. And to make it double, I'm just going to go ahead and glue it together with a little bit of that hot glue. Place it in between, making sure the paddles are opposite of each other. And then place it on those marks that we marked earlier, just making sure it's in place. Now this is a ladder style. Now I did have a different idea at first, so I'm going to end up adding the other ladder pieces later. But you can add them now if you like. So now in order to reinforce that connection, I'm just going to add some uh, staples with my staple gun to all of the um, sections where the paint sticks are glued down. And this is totally optional, but I just like my projects to be super secure. Now once that's done, I am going to stain it and I'll be using this Waverly Antique Wax to do this. And all you have to do is just use an, a rag and just start rubbing it on all of the paint stir sticks. Now these say, uh, these stir sticks do take the stain very well with the antique wax. You just want to apply it all over the front and I did apply it to the back just to make sure my piece is all cohesive. Now while that dries, we're going to grab our bucket that has the primer already on it and our finishing coat is going to be this Satin Bright White by Krylon Spray Paint. Now you don't have to use spray paint if you don't want to. You can use some chalk paint or even you can use some acrylic paint to finish off your piece. It's all up to you. 
Now here is the box all nice and dry and ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do is grab my black acrylic paint and I'll be using this to give it the wear and the enamel chipping effect. So I'm taking a very fine tipped paintbrush and I'm just dragging the edge of that paintbrush along the edge of the box. And this just gives it natural wear markings along the edge. I just love how this turns out. There's really no rhyme or reason on how you do this. You just do it to your heart's content. Now once you drag it along, then you can go in and add more prominent chipping areas around the box edges and just do this all the way around the box until your heart is happy. <laughs> and here is what mine looks like. So now that our ladder rack is dry, we are gonna add a header piece. Now I have this home sign in my stash that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna place this up top. You can place anything that you like on top or you can even leave it blank or put flowers. It's all up to you. And I notice it has two little holes at the top to hang a string, but I wanna cover those. So I have some silver spray painted poster board pieces that I'm gonna use to cover up the holes. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a glue stick to the back end and then place the a piece of poster board right over those holes with the silver side facing down so it kind of blends in and those holes won't be as prominent and now we can add it on I'm gonna put a dab of that hot glue on each one of the corners of that sign and then center it and place it right in the center up top So now that that's on there, we are gonna add a piece of jute string with knots tied on each end. And this is what I'll be using to actually hang our piece. This is a really lightweight piece, so this will work perfectly. And I'm just gonna apply two staples on each end, just securing it into place on each side. And that will be enough strength to hold this piece up if you want to hang it instead of lean it. Now here's where I come in and add my two additional paint stir sticks. I'm going to add them, just evenly spacing them apart to give it a ladder effect. And then I'm going to take my um, glue of choice and then place it right on those ladder sides as shown here. You could do this earlier, if, like I mentioned before, but I did decide last minute to do this and make it more of a ladder look. And I'm loving how this looks. So now all you have to do is had your hanging planter on the ladder rung and you can get ready to decorate. So here is our ladder planter on display and I really love how this one turned out. Now this ladder piece really looks great with the paint stir sticks and the Waverly Wax stain goes so well on these. And these can easily be customized however you like and you can change up the greenery and the florals throughout the year with the changing seasons. Let me know in the comments how and where you would use this piece in your home. This project is a decorative pitcher decor piece. Now we're gonna need one of these clear pitchers from the Dollar Tree. We'll need some scrapbook paper, craft paper of your choice, and a couple of sheets of printer paper. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab our picture, and I know I'm gonna grab that printer paper. I cut one sheet in half and just taped it on to the other sheet um, lengthwise, the long way. So now I'm gonna wrap it around my picture, and what I wanna do is just make sure the bottom edge is even with that seam near the top, and then at the bottom, I'm just gonna trace the outline of the bottom on that paper as it's wrapped around. Now this will form the curve of the container, and it does curve, so you need to actually it out and as you see here this is what the bottom curve of the container will look like just go ahead and trim that out with a pair of scissors and then trim off a couple of inches of that excess since you won't need it since it was overlapped and now I'm just going to roll that up stick it inside my picture and you see that it's nice and even with the bottom of the container on the inside so that's good to go so now we're going to trace that top edge and I'm going to go along the top edge where that wavy pattern turns straight on the picture you'll see it once you get the picture I just wanted to trim it down to that edge and then I just um, cut it out I'm going to roll it up again place it back inside my picture and just make sure the top edge is now even along with the bottom edge and everything looks good with my template 
So now this is my final template to cut out on my scrapbook paper. I highly suggest making a template first so you don't ruin any of your scrapbook paper or make it go to waste. So I'm just going to lay the template down on my uh, two printed pieces of buffalo check paper that I have here that I taped together and I'm just going to trace it on there and then cut it out with a pair of scissors. Now once you trim everything out, you're just going to roll it up and stick it back into the uh, va the um, picture and just make sure everything looks okay. Now you will have a seam in the back, that is okay. And then once that's fit in there really well, I'm just going to take some tape and I'm going to tape the inside seam where it overlaps just so it holds its shape. Now once everything looks good from the outside, go ahead and pull it out and we're just going to tape down the, um, the outside overlap too and I'm just going to roll up a piece of tape and put it up under that edge so that stays in place. So I wanted the top edge, the handle, and the spout to be painted white. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take some painter's tape and I am going to line the inside upper edge of the container where that straight part meets the wavy part and I'm just going to line that tape evenly on the inside of the container. Now once you have that fully lined, I'm going to take some white acrylic paint and I'm just going to start applying it around the top edge of the tape. Now the first layer around is really going to be dry brushed on because you just want to form that seam between the tape and the container so you don't have any bleeding of your paint. And then once that dries, you can go around with another layer. So while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and paint the spout portion with my white paint and I just want to make sure I get in there with a fine paintbrush and then I want to paint that inside edge of the handle as well. So the whole top portion of my picture will be white. Now once you do apply each one of those layers, you just want to apply the layer on there, let that dry and then go in with a second layer. So here are both layers on there, just allow them to completely dry. Okay, now that it's dry, you can go ahead and pull your painter's tape off. Go ahead and check and clean up any edges that you may have missed or may have some uh, a little bit of um, paint seeping out of there. So now we can, all we have to do is put in our buffalo check or whatever print that you have into our container and there is the final look. Now how simple was that? I absolutely love it and now we can decorate. And here it is. I mean, this was so super easy to make and it turned out great. Now I've just added some greenery to my vase along with some beads to decorate it. Now I really think that this will look amazing with some spring flowers and holiday arrangements as well and I can't wait. Now you certainly can apply the paper on the outside but I did want mine on the inside so it would be interchangeable and I love this method of decorating. Now I just hope that you all give this a try as well. Now this project is a wood metal look family sign. Now we're going to need one three pack of the five gallon paint stir sticks from Lowe's for 98 cents, some poster board letters from the Dollar Tree, and we're going to need a piece of poster board from the Dollar Tree that we will turn into this metal look piece. So we're going to take our paint stir sticks and we want to lay them out, stacking them on top of each other, just making sure that the handles are opposite of each other on this piece. Now to join these together, I will be using some extra craft sticks that I had on hand and these are the long ones so I'm going to go ahead and cut them off and then I want four pieces laying across the back. Now you do want to make sure the numbers and measurements are facing you. Now to adhere these, I'm just using some wood hot glue or you can use regular wood glue. Just apply those sticks all the way down the back of the piece. Now once they're adhered, I did notice I did have the measurements on the good side. So all you have to do is just go in with some sandpaper and they sand off pretty easily and then wipe the front clean and you're good to go.
So we're gonna lay out some paper and we are going to be staining this with our Waverly Antique Wax. So I'm just gonna take my rag and apply a nice even layer all over the front of our piece. Just making sure you wipe it down after you apply the wax to get a nice even coat. And here is the layer on the front and the back side. Now while that dries, what we're going to do is work on our poster board. Now this is the poster board piece that's 18 inches by six inches. What I did is I embossed lines on it and I also painted it with silver spray paint and then dabbed it. Now I do have a tutorial on how to do this. I'll link it in the upper right hand corner of this video and also in the description box below. So what we're gonna do with this piece is we are going to cut some, some pieces out of this with the lines going across them as shown here. So we're gonna take our utility knife and cut out three inch wide pieces. Now what we wanna cut, is we wanna cut a total of three pieces for this project. Now once we do that, we are just gonna fan fold the pieces and your embossed lines makes this super easy to do. And once you fan fold it, we are gonna find the center and then cut that piece in half so we'll have two galvanized looking metal pieces and then repeat this for the other two pieces. And now you have a total of six for your sign. So at this time, you can go ahead and grab your poster letters and I wanna spell out the word family on my pieces. So I'm gonna take each poster letter and place it right in the center. Now these probably won't stick very well to this. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna add a little bit of hot glue, then place that sticker right on top and you just have to uh, secure it in a few places. Now these letters will be kind of floating on top of the galvanized looking pieces. So you just wanna make sure you secure it in a few places and then place your letter right on top so it'll stay right in place. Now you just wanna repeat this until all of your letters are applied. So now your wood piece should be nice and dry and we are gonna to start to apply our hanging piece. Now you can use jute twine or rope, but I decided to use this gingham ribbon. I thought it was super cute, so I'm just gonna add it to the back of the sign. I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue each side in place, just making sure you secure about a couple of inches of that ribbon on each side, making sure that it has enough give at the top to look very nice from the front. Now once you secure the edges of those ribbons down, I'm gonna follow up with my staple gun just to add a staple in each one of those ribbons for a little added security. So now that that's done, we can start to add our galvanized letter pieces to the front of our sign. And what we wanna do is space them nice and even. And once these are evenly spaced, I'm just gonna add a couple of lines of hot glue on the back of each one and secure it on to the sign. And here are all of our pieces applied and I am loving how this looks. And there you have it, a cute family sign to hang up that would go perfectly with a photo collage. Now I really love using this faux metal technique and especially it's so hard to find these so I hope that you all find this tutorial useful in your crafting. Now I loved creating all of these projects today and as always it's hard for me to pick a favorite so let me know in the comments which one of these DIYs was your favorite today. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She So Craft DEE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She So Crafty logo on your screen and make sure you hit that bell to be notified when my next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.